This video is sponsored by Daily Battlefields, a fellow military YouTube channel covering the latest about military tech, with particular emphasis on Italian armed forces. Recent coverage includes info on new Italian frigates, Cavour aircraft carrier Airwing, or next generation spy satellites. If there's something you wanted to know about Italian army, Daily Battlefields is going to cover it. Commissar salutes you. If France went to war with Italy, how would that war go? Our usual rules will apply. Both countries have a similar number of soldiers, both in active duty and reserves. While numerous on paper, the paramilitary components would in reality yield far less actual combat troops for both. Two countries share a border, which would quickly become a battlefield. Furthermore, the Mediterranean islands would also get contested. Initial disposition of ground forces would slightly favor the French. They have over 4,000 troops stationed close to the border. Italians have roughly half a brigade. Taking into account troops a bit further away, France could initially still muster more troops than Italy. Of course, all those troops would quickly be reinforced. Italy is in a slightly better position there, as their eastern regions are rich with high output roads and railroads, while French South is comparably less well off. French airborne and air assault troops are more numerous on paper, though only part of them is in France. Still, France could try and take key positions near the border or reinforce Corsica. Overall, as many as 11 regiments worth of French units are stationed overseas. Italy has far less overseas territories and does not have permanent military bases on them. So while France could make the front move slightly over the Alps with incursions of its small infantry units, the gains would be negligible. Italy could still amass many more troops just beyond its side of the Alps to stop any further French advance. Whatever tanks and other hardware France might bring would be hard to use in narrow passes over the Alps. With border in the middle, the Alpine area to be crossed is fairly wide. Majority of it can be traversed by foot infantry only, without vehicles. Air power and various fire support would be of little use for both sides in such environment. So Italians would not be able to fully utilize their slight artillery edge. Both sides use guided MLRS rounds. French use self-guided anti-vehicle rounds, while Italian Navy has satellite-guided rounds at their disposal. Tanks-wise, the French have it better. Greater numbers and somewhat better capability. Yet, due to said mountainous terrain, tanks would hardly get to be used efficiently, making them a non-factor. As Italy was historically protecting its borders over the mountains, it also has doubled the number of units trained for mountain warfare. It could help them slow down the incoming French. Infantry vehicles, just like tanks, would be of little use. If one tries to use them, they would basically clog up the mountain passes in long lines and give the enemy a very easy target. The Mediterranean would see a lot of action. Italian Navy is numerous, as it has to be to protect its islands. Corsica and Sardinia would be targets of choice for both sides. Both belligerents have large naval bases close to each other, but geared more for protecting the Med, Italians have more assets closer. It means Italy could position a big portion of their fleet west of Corsica's Sardinia line, if needed, before the French. So French would not enjoy their theoretical numerical advantage at first. With the proximity of set bases to each belligerent, an air attack by both sides would be likely, trying to get as many ships as possible before they leave their ports. French hold the advantage when it comes to combat aircraft, especially fighters. Their ground strike capable fleet is less superior but is still more numerous. Italians would have no choice but to go on the defensive, after the possible port attack. Another French advantage, probably used against Italian air bases, command centers and ships still in ports, are cruise missiles. Italians would have other issues as well, controlling their airspace. The French have more airborne radars. Not only that, but French could rely on their over-the-horizon radar. While it cannot monitor parts of Italy closest to France, it can see most of Italian territory and the Mediterranean. It could come in very handy for early warning of possible Italian strikes. Its biggest issue is the fact it is a large fixed location. If Italians could somehow reach into France, they could damage it. Both sides also have surface wave radars. They provide surveillance of ships and low-flying aircraft. In the end, Italians would have to rely on their air defenses. Their territory has a lot of depth and many bases to rebase their planes. 
while defending, they would be enjoying dozens of ground radars, while the French would hardly dare go far into Italian territory with their AWACS type planes. While the French have more numerous air defenses, preventing Italians from conducting frequent strikes, Italian air defenses are also numerous enough to inflict French unsustainable losses, if they keep striking too far over the border. Those air defenses would be aided by shipborne ones. It's an area where Italians have a slight advantage. Submarines would play a huge role in control of the seas. Italian ones are closer positioned and they may rush to get to area a day earlier. But in doing so, they would spend a lot of their fuel. French subs are all nuclear fueled and could remain on patrol in the Med for months. Either side subs could cause huge damage, so hunting them from the air would be very important. France has a visible edge there, which would be further accentuated by French Air Force's control of the airspace near the border. Battle for the islands would begin. On Corsica, French have a single regiment, while Italians have a small brigade on Sardinia. Corsica is also smaller and less capable to sustain a large force on its own. Proximity of both islands to Italy would also make it easier for Italy to sneak helicopter-borne troops and supplies or use ferries. The French have a larger amphibious assault fleet, but that may not mean much, as Sardinia is simply too big and too close to Italy to be cut off. That means the more numerous French troops trained in marine assault would also not be a deciding factor. The Mistral landing ships could disembark only so many troops at once. The French would rely on their control of the air and sea west of the islands to bring in troops and supplies to Corsica. Any French assault on Sardinia would be faced with far greater Italian army numbers, even when airborne and air assault numbers are added. Italy could simply bring in troops via helicopters to uncontested zones, as France could not monitor low-altitude airspace beyond Sardinia effectively. Recon assets play a large role in any war and would be deciding who has what on which island. Both sides are fairly equally matched in that regard. The French goal would be to try and whittle down Italian transport assets through air combat. It's an area where Italy lags behind and if not careful could lose much of the ability to support Sardinia by planes. Transport helicopters are much more numerous, equaling the French inventory. Speaking of helicopters, Attack helicopters are another area where French are ahead, especially taking into account their vast scout helicopter fleet. Despite the French relative air superiority, Corsica might see some harassment, due to its proximity to Italy, especially due to these Italian islands. Parts of Corsica would be in artillery range, supporting possible Italian incursions on the island. The French could try and assault those Italian islands, but as they are close to Italian mainland, they would be impossible to hold. Due to proximity to Italian air defenses, engaging Italian artillery might be quite costly for the French. Still, without proper air and naval superiority, Italians would be unlikely to actually hold significant parts of Corsica. Its mountainous terrain would help defenders, but also Italians, if they want to seek protection from airstrikes. In the long run though, any disembarked troops would likely have to surrender. France is simply a greater military power. Slightly bigger population and economy put Italy in a disadvantageous position. But the fact France spends much more on its defense really sets it apart. Even though a large portion of that budget goes to upkeep of overseas forces and its nuclear arsenal. If the war lasted for a year, some additional weapons might come into play in small numbers, not really changing the balance of power. Still, due to geography, France could not exert its military power too much. Its gains over the Alps would be costly, and it could not hope to bring enough troops over to sustain a push through the Italian low regions. Even in the air and on the sea, if Italians stay defensive and pick their air battles, overall casualty ratio would not favor the French too much. End result? French marginal victory. Big thanks goes to all my patrons on Patreon. Without you, we wouldn't be able to make as many videos. Do subscribe if you like my content. And if you want to be notified about new videos, don't forget to click that bell button. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.